Hi guys. It is a hot, sticky, soon to be stormy summer day here in the end times in paradise. I am somewhere deep in the Finger Lakes region of upstate New York uh, deciding whether this, well, I've pretty much decided the Finger Lakes is where I'm going to carve out my niche to survive <coughs> Mad Max. I'm just trying to figure out whether this is the very spot, and it looks like it just might be. So, uh, <coughs> this is the very first sermon <coughs> ever from uh, my little spot. Uh, we'll have to figure out a name for this spot. Help, help me think of the proper name for my little bivouac for the end times. But it is Sunday morning, I believe July 28th, 2019. And the little dog and I, we have a busy day. We need to stack firewood. We need to uh, go have some sub-Saharan African soul food. I have a new friend here in the Finger Lakes uh, who owns a a, I have made sub-Saharan African friends here in the end times. Uh, there you go. And then I think I'm going to look at a foreclosure in Texas Valley. <clears throat> Texas Valley, New York. This old farmhouse for $36,000 in Texas Valley. And... Uh, Anyway, so before I go, I'm just going to do what I do every Sunday. I love Sunday because I get to wear both of my hats and bring you my weekly doomsday sermon on one level and my chronicle of the collapse for Monday so I can compare numbers between these two channels uh, as I continually try to figure out how I want my YouTube career to evolve. So, what I was going to do, guys, was, uh, I think six of you, you know, I, the little dog and I, we have been out camping and kayaking in the wilderness of the Adirondack Mountains. And I think six of my alert listeners, uh, have sent me this story from the BBC News, which has been picked up all over the place. This Here I am on Common Dreams. It's showing up here titled, 12 Years to Save the Planet? Make that 18 months. So by the title, it sounds like uh, the this article is claiming we have even 18 months left to save the planet, which of course anyone down in this rabbit hole knows is a joke. But then when you start reading the article, what they're seriously suggesting here, uh, what they're talking about 18 months from now is some UN climate talks, COP26, is that that? that somewhere over there in Zombie Island, at the end of 2020, in like December of 2020, that the United Nations is finally going to come up with the plan to save the planet. That is the 18 months that they are referring to. And they're actually suggesting the BBC uh, that the United Nations... I think maybe Prince Charles or somebody, one of those uh, royalty one percenters uh, are all going to roll up their shirt sleeves and finally figure out how to save the planet. And so the more I started reading that, uh, you know, I did like the final line of the BBC News report where the reporter or the editor summed it all up. The, uh, the last four words of this article, don't hold your breath, exclamation point. <laughs> don't hold your breath, 
meaning anybody out there reading this article, uh, the writer or the, and or the editor lets you know the, what it was all about. It ain't gonna happen. We know damn well that the United Nations is not going to save the planet by holding COP26. If you believe for one second that the United Nations is going to save this planet uh, 18 months from now by holding another climate talk, uh, you might be an apocalyptimist. So anyway, so I, <coughs> I threw that one away and just came up with this one right next to it in Common Dreams, a little more dose of reality. This is by this fellow Lorenzo Marsili. I love that name, Lorenzo Marsili, uh, talking about the rise of corporate nations. This was originally published in Al Jazeera. That's where I recognize Lorenzo's name. It was published in Al Jazeera and republished on Common Dreams. So we're going to let Lorenzo, who I guarantee you, Lorenzo does not believe the UN is going to save the planet in 18 months. We're just going to take his uh, essay. <coughs> the rise of corporate nations. Multinational corporations are increasingly encroaching on the functions of sovereign states. Increasingly encroaching, which is a, another way of saying the uh, global corporatocracy, otherwise known as the New World Order, has completely bought out anything, the, the very notion of sovereignty, sovereign states meaning sovereign nations, uh, please, the very notion that there is anything remotely resembling sovereign nations. But we're going to start out from a quote. See if you recognize this quote. <clears throat> there is no America. There is no democracy. There is only IBM and ITT and AT&T and DuPont, Dow, Union Carbide, and Exxon. Those are the nations of the world today. The world is a collage of corporations inexorably determined by the immutable bylaws of business, close quote. And if you are, if you recognize that quote, you're dating yourself because that was uh, from the 1976 movie Network. Uh, I think Network is, uh, I can't take it anymore or whatever. I I anyway, where <coughs> that was the famous monologue from the film Network delivered by actor Ned Beatty in 1976, reflected, you know, however, good Lord, the 20, almost, what, 40, about 40 years ago, reflected the growing anxiety at that time that corporate power could eventually overturn democracy. Today, what was feared 40 years ago is becoming a reality. It has become a reality. Corporations have become the nations of the world and they increasingly act as such. And so most of what he talks about, he just gives us one example of Facebook. And I had heard something about this, but I was glad uh, to hear, to, to educate myself. So last month, Facebook announced that it is introducing its own currency called Libra, which the more than 2 billion users or citizens of the platform will be able to use to pay for goods and services. 
this announcement comes at a time when the monetary policies of countries across the world have increasingly accommodated the interest of big corporations and the wealthy at the expense of ordinary people. This has led to both unprecedented deregulation, which has caused repeated economic crises and the subsequent imposition of severe austerity measures hurting the livelihoods of millions of citizens. <coughs> Facebook's cryptocurrency initiative signals that this issue will assume even bigger proportions for millennia one of the defining features of sovereignty has been the minting and circulation of state-specific currency. Now, corporations like Facebook are now taking over this prerogative from governments, but Monetary policy is not neutral. It is one of the main levers for the distribution of wealth and privilege. Facebook has given its assurance to U.S. lawmakers, claiming the company wants to, quote, do this right, close quote. Oh, yeah. Libra will initially be just a payment method anchored to a basket of hard currencies and not an autonomous coin, or so has been promised. But during a July 16th congressional hearing, Facebook executive Dave Margus struggled to answer questions about how this new currency will be regulated. <clears throat> At the heart of the matter, is the problem of decision-making and accountability. Facebook's corporate executives, who already have substantial power by way of having access to large swaths of data on billions of people, will acquire another lever of control over the world, currency. At the same time, they will remain unaccountable to anyone but themselves in the way they manage monetary operations. Uh, imagine, for example, what effect Libra would have on countries with unstable or weak currency. Would it become a mainstream substitute for the Argentinian peso? or the Venezuelan Bolivar? What guarantees are there that Facebook executives would not take advantage of the power Libra gives them to use it to economically and politically blackmail a weak government? Yes, given its long track record of problematic practices, including the m misuse of personal data, can Facebook be trusted with so much power? The prospect of sovereign power in political decision-making being shifted away from national capitals and to Silicon Valley is real. And it is not only Facebook that is pushing in this direction. Corpora corporations like Google and Amazon are building campuses that increasingly look like autonomous mini-states with their own infrastructure, retail, social services, and even shelters for the homeless. Google also announced a billion-dollar housing investment plan in the San Francisco area, directly intervening in urban planning at a time when states are increasingly unable to guarantee their citizens the right to affordable housing. Corporations are also increasingly able to mobilize their own 
citizens. And I think by putting this in quotes, he, he means that they are literally calling people citizens to shift public policy. <clears throat> Uber has been rallying its users to fight against greater public regulation of its business model, while Airbnb has been leveraging the interests of its users to avoid greater fiscal scrutiny. Corporations are also able to play states one against the other to remove regulations and provide huge tax breaks. <clears throat> Amazon, for example, has paid a grand total of exactly zero, zero federal taxes on $11.2 billion of corporate profits in 2018. <clears throat> As the Cambridge Analytica scandal has already demonstrated, corporations <clears throat> can also utilize the personal information <clears throat> of billions of people around the world for propaganda purposes. They can effectively sway public opinion, manipulate political views, and perhaps soon enough build national identities, the word national in quotes. <clears throat> and here goes my battery. Indeed, we are witnessing the birth of a new kind of planetary powers boasting genuine state characteristics, global corporate nations that can extend their powers across the entire planet. Traditional concepts of state sovereignty are becoming increasingly irrelevant as corporations encroach on state functions. If today they are able to compete in information control, social provision, and currency circulation, how far away is their takeover of the ultimate symbol of state power, monopoly over the use of force? And I would argue that uh, certainly the oil companies have already uh, attained that. Uh, in, anybody who does not understand uh, who the U.S. military uh, plays step and fetch it for, it is the oil companies. So I would say that day is already here. <clears throat> As the power and reach of corporate nations grow, this will continue to feed into another phenomenon characteristic of our time, the widespread feeling of powerlessness among ordinary people that lies at the root of many of the ongoing ultra-nationalist uprisings. Uh, I could go into a separate rant here, but I need to wrap this up because my battery is dying. <clears throat> Weakened governments will increasingly resort to nationalism and xenophobia to rally support for their failing policies and pretend to regain control of the state. Can you say, make America great again? Thus, the global crisis of democracy and liberalism will continue to deepen in the coming years. Indeed, our future may look bleak, but there could be a silver lining to what is going on today. Oh, yes. Perhaps the aggressive moves of corporations like Facebook could be a wake-up call for ordinary people and their leaders alike. Oh, yes. Libra might finally make us ask 
the right sort of questions. Why should a global currency be administered by a private association headquartered in Switzerland rather than by a new political settlement that overhauls the international institutions of the 1944 Bretton Woods Agreement such as the IMF and the World Bank? And to answer that question would take me about uh, six interviews with people who can answer it a lot better than me. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> why should states compete with each other over corporate tax revenue rather than build a common fiscal policy for multinationals? Why should unaccountable corporate boardrooms be allowed to reap unlimited profits from big data instead of having nations leverage it for the public good. The question ultimately is whether our outdated national politics can take back control over corporate nations and planetary challenges such as the climate crisis, migration, or artificial intelligence. It is time to recognize this common threat, unify, and take action together beyond the borders of our weakening nation states. Time to take action, apparently, uh, Lorenzo, like uh, Chris Hedges, has never read uh, 1984 for uh, the reality of the revolution of the proles overturning our benevolent corporate overlords. But anyway, I have got to wrap up today's Doomsday Sermon. And uh, this week's Doomsday Sermon and Monday's Chronicle of the Collapse because uh, I promised my buddy I would help him stack firewood for his wood stove to get through another winter in the Finger Lakes on this beautiful summer day. <clears throat> in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Okay, little dog. We need to get stacking firewood, chop wood, carry water. Here on this beautiful summer day. Get out there and enjoy it while you still can. So this is going to be my view of the sunset from uh, my tiny house. I have a beautiful sunset view from the bivouac. Bye guys.